The pyramids in Giza are an enduring symbol of ancient Egyptian civilization. These structures were built as monuments to house the tombs of pharaohs or kings. Archaeologists think the ancient Egyptians built these monuments in the shape of a pyramid so that they would reach up toward the sky and create a pathway to heaven. The Great Pyramid, built around 2520 BC, is constructed of approximately 2,300,000 stone blocks. The blocks average two and a half tons each in weight, about 5,000 pounds. This is about the weight of two small automobiles. How the pyramids were built is as fascinating as why they were built. So, to understand, these archaeologists are constructing a new pyramid using the same kind of tools available over 4,000 years ago. The builders put together these massive rectangular shaped blocks to create the shape of a nearly geometrically perfect pyramid. Both the blocks and the pyramid are three-dimensional figures. That means they have points beyond or outside a single plane, so they take up three-dimensional space. Both the blocks and the pyramid are examples of a polyhedron, a three-dimensional object with polygons as faces. See how the faces of the blocks are rectangles and the faces of the pyramids are triangles? Each block is a prism, which is a polyhedron that has two congruent and parallel polygons as bases, with parallelogram faces in between. Let's take a look at the three-dimensional figures found in modern cities. New York City. It has one of the most recognizable skylines in the world. New York is home to international corporations, media outlets, and world-class museums. It's also home to over 8 million people, making it the most populated city in the United States. It should be easy to find some three-dimensional figures here. Over there on the top of that building is a cube, a prism with square bases and square faces. All the corners of a cube have right angles in each dimension. And all of the edges of a cube have equal lengths. We can see that when we measure. All the faces of a cube have equal areas. The area of a rectangle is its length times its width. But the length and width of a square are the same. So the area is the length of a side times the length of another side, or S squared. We can find the surface area of the entire cube by multiplying the area of one face by six, the total number of faces. We can find spheres down at street level in these street lamps with spherical globes. A sphere is a three-dimensional object for which every point is the same distance from the center. No matter where we draw a radius, a line from the center to the sphere, it will be equal in length to every other radius we draw. To figure out the surface area of a sphere, we need just to know the length of the radius. The formula is 4 times pi r squared. There are lots of rectangular prisms in the New York City skyline. Can you see any of them? This 38-story tower is an example of the international style of architecture. It is made of steel and glass, has no ornamentation, and the form is simple. It's a rectangular prism. A rectangular prism has parallel congruent rectangles at each end, called bases. The faces of a rectangular prism are made up of parallelograms, and the faces on opposite sides are congruent and therefore have the same area. We can figure out the surface area of the entire rectangular prism by finding the area of all six sides and adding them together. But since we know that the opposite sides have the same area, we just need to find the area of three of the sides and multiply each by two, then add them together. The smokestacks on this building are cylinders. A cylinder is a three-dimensional object that has parallel bases that are congruent circles with a surface connecting them. To figure out the surface area of a cylinder, break the figure down into its elements. Each base is a circle, and the surface unwraps to form a rectangle. The area of a circle is pi times r squared. 
There are two bases, so multiply the answer by two. For the area of the surface, take the circumference, the length of the rectangle, times the height of the cylinder. Two times pi times the radius is the formula for circumference. Then multiply that by the height. The entire formula for the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Measuring 1,046 feet, the Chrysler Building is the second tallest building in New York City. The geometric shapes on the tower are an example of the Art Deco style of architecture that was popular between 1925 and 1940. In fact, the tower's design was modeled after the hubcaps that were being used on Chrysler automobiles at the time. The top of the Chrysler building is shaped like a pyramid. When we draw on the lines, it's easier to see. A pyramid has a polygon base and triangle-shaped faces that connect to a point in a different plane. In this case, the base is a square but a pyramid can have a base that's a non-square rectangle, a hexagon, or even another triangle. The surface area of a pyramid is the area of the base plus the areas of all the sides. So for a pyramid with a square base, figure out the area of the square, length squared, and add it to the areas of the triangles. Each one is half the base times the height along the face, multiplied by four, the number of sides. There are lots of old water towers on the roofs of New York City buildings. The tops of these water towers are cones, which are similar to pyramids, except that their bases are circles. In a cone, the points on the circle create a surface that connect to a point in a different plane. To figure out the surface area of a cone, break the cone down to its base, a circle, and surface. The area of a circle is pi r squared. r is the radius. The area of the surface is pi r times height along the surface, also known as the slant height. Add the area of the base circle to the area of the surface to get the surface area of a cone, pi r squared plus pi r h. As you can see, there are lots of interesting three-dimensional shapes and figures all over New York City, but they will have to wait for another time. <laughs>